think it was Albert Schweitzer who said, what is bad is not that man lives and dies, but what dies within man while he lives. And perhaps the most important thing that dies within man while he lives is his imagination. The thing that keeps you going and keeps you creative is to never lose your imagination. Always dream of things that are better and think about ways to reach those things. In the vast realm of human ingenuity, there are those whose contributions resonate through the ages, like the soothing melody of a well-composed symphony. Today we embark on a journey to explore the life and legacy of a man whose innovations transformed the way we experience sound, Mr. Amar Gopal Bose. Scientist, engineer and entrepreneur, Amar Bose lived a life full of milestones, with his company, Bose Corporation, being among the most well-known audio empires today. I didn't have the wisdom to know that I, in fact, would really enjoy teaching. And given my choice, I would have never done this. What I found out is there's one key secret to the whole thing. Whatever job you're given, and that wasn't one that I looked forward to, ask yourself, how can I do that job better, in fact, than it has ever been done before? Our story begins in 1929 when a young Amarbos was born in Philadelphia, USA. To a Bengali father, Mr. Norigopal Bose, and an American mother, Charlotte Macklin. His mother was a school teacher of French and German ancestry. His father was an Indian independence activist who, having been imprisoned for his political activities, fled Bengal in the 1920s in order to avoid further persecution by the British colonial police. Gifted with an insatiable curiosity and an innate passion for technology, Bose exhibited extraordinary intellect from a tender age. Bose first displayed his entrepreneurial skills and his interest in electronics at age 13, when during the World War II years, he enlisted school friends as co-workers in a small business repairing model trains and home radios to supplement his family's income. Bose's fascination with sound and electronics led him to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he embarked on a journey that would eventually revolutionized the audio industry. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering in the early 1950s, Bose spent a year at Philips Naturkundig Laboratorium in Netherlands and a year as a Fulbright Research student in New Delhi, India, where he met his future wife. He completed his PhD in Electrical Engineering from MIT writing a thesis on non-linear systems under the supervision of Norbert Weiner and Yuk Wing Lee. In the 1950s, Bose began his groundbreaking research in acoustics, laying the foundation of what would become the Bose Corporation. His vision was clear, to create a sound experience that transcended the ordinary. Following graduation, Amar Bose became an assistant professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. During his early years as a professor, Bose brought a high-end stereo speaker system in 1956 and he was disappointed to find that speakers with impressive technical specifications failed to reproduce the realism of a live performance. This would eventually motivate his extensive speaker technology research, concentrating on key weaknesses in the high-end speaker systems available at the time. His research in acoustics led him to develop a stereo loudspeaker that would reproduce in a domestic setting the dominantly reflected sound field that characterizes the listening space of the audience in a concert hall. His focus on psychoacoustics later became a hallmark of his company's audio products. 
Amar Bose's commitment to excellence was unwavering. He believed that the key to true audio innovation lay not only in the amplification of sound, but in the elimination of unwanted noise. This led to the birth of an invention that would change the way we listen forever. The world's first noise-canceling headphones. In the 1980s, Bose developed an electromagnetic replacement for automotive shock absorbers intended to radically improve the performance of automotive suspension systems, absorbing bumps and road shock while controlling car body motions and sway. Project Sound was an attempt to realize a dream that Dr. Bose had to have an automobile that would handle like a sports car but be as comfortable as a luxury car. And so his vision was to do this with control systems and use computer algorithms to do intelligent things with the suspension instead of just using shocks and springs. I went in there and I started talking to him about the problem. I said, you know, this is really, really hard, which was for me, code word for impossible. And he said, good. And I said, good, what do you, what do you mean? I'm saying this is really, really hard. He says, good, because when we solve it, we'll have something really valuable. It was a really crazy idea, but when you saw demonstrations of it, or once I got to drive it, it was amazing, right? You could see, yes, there are real benefits to customers here. Um, and even though you might be skeptical about some of these things having commercial possibilities, you still felt proud that research came up with an, a, such an amazing idea. As the Bose Corporation blossomed, so did its reputation for groundbreaking audio technology. From home audio systems to professional sound solutions, Bose became synonymous with uncompromised quality. Amar Bose's dedication to his craft did not go unnoticed. He earned numerous awards and accolades for his pioneering work in acoustics and entrepreneurship. His legacy extended well beyond the corporate world, inspiring a new generation of engineers and audiophiles. In addition to running his company, Bose remained a professor at MIT until 2001. He earned the Baker Teaching Award in 1963-64 and further teaching awards over the years. The Bose Award for Excellence in Teaching 1989 and later the Junior Bose Award 1995 were established in his honor to recognize outstanding teaching in the MIT School of Engineering. Former students have stated that his classes helped them gain life skills and problem-solving skills that have served them throughout their careers. Bose was the doctoral advisor to MIT professor Alan V. Oppenheim, who is well known for his work on digital signal processing and his books on signals and systems. Oppenheim dedicated one of his books to Bose and described him with these words. What I learned from him about teaching, research and life over the many decades of our relationship affected me in ways too numerous to describe. He set the highest standards in everything that he did and his accomplishments as a teacher, an inventor and an entrepreneur are legendary. In 2007, Amar Bose was listed in Forbes 400 as the 271st richest man in the world with a net worth of $1.8 billion. In 2011, Bose donated a majority of the company's non-voting shares to MIT on the condition that the shares never be sold. Because these shares are non-voting, MIT does not participate in operations or governance of Bose Corporation. Today, the fruits of Amar Bose's labor are heard globally. His inventions have found their way into living rooms, concert halls, and airplane cabins, enriching the lives of millions. I am a party. Inside of my head. Inside of the company my Bose founded employed 11,700 people worldwide as of 2016 and produces products for home, car and professional audio as well as conducting basic research and acoustics in other fields. Bose never took his company public and since the company is privately held, Bose was able to pursue 
risky long-term research. In the twilight of his illustrious career, Amar Bose remained deeply involved in the company he founded. His commitment to advancing audio technology never waned, and he continued to push the boundaries of what was possible. Absolutely remarkable act of generosity. We benefit from how well the company runs itself, but we have no say on how the company should run itself. We're working together um, to honor uh, Dr. Bose, to achieve his vision, um, and his vision is ongoing. What is unbelievable to me about Dr. Bose is that when he expressed what his dream was as a founder, it was he dreamed of a place in which all of us had the opportunity to fulfill our own personal dreams. I think that when Bose is at its best, it's a place where people can dream and then be given the chance to reach those dreams. Bose said that his best ideas usually came to him in a flash. These innovations are not the result of rational thought. It's an intuitive idea. As we reflect on the life of Amar Gopal Bose, we are reminded that true innovation stems from passion, perseverance, and an unwavering commitment to excellence. The legacy of this extraordinary scientist and entrepreneur continues to echo through the corridors of sound, ensuring that the world will forever be tuned to the brilliance of Amar Bose.